everyone. I'm your host, Todd C. Slater, and welcome to Simply Real Estate. We are coming to you from the headquarters of the Simple Investor right here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Now, each week, as I had promised last week, we are going to start taking a look at one individual topic. But before I get there, let's talk about the real estate market in general. Right now in North America, it seems like it's a pretty steady market. Interest rates are becoming more attractive right now. The Fed and the Bank of Canada are looking at a potential reduction in the fall. So this means that your five-year money, those that five-year fixed mortgage, is going to continue to come down. This is going to afford you a lot of opportunities in the near future. So if you're a buyer, keep in mind, watch the interest rates because they are going to become more affordable. This week's topic though, as I promised last week, is we're going to talk about being a real estate speculator. We're going to talk about being a real estate speculator and the avenues that you can utilize in that. But I'm gonna give you a quick recap before we go down that road. And I wanna to talk to you, of course, about being a real estate investor. If you remember, last week we broke it down. We used the simple equation. The simple equation, of course, is based on value appreciation. That means the value actually going up. We take a look at the fact that we're doing mortgage pay down. That's a real important thing. This is when part of your mortgage payment is to actually going towards reducing the principal of that mortgage and, of course, cash flow. Cash flow is that tough one, and again, positive, negative. We always want to be in the positive category. Some people, though, are going into the negative, and that is what I want to break down this week. When we talk about simple speculation, you know, this is when somebody is turning around and they are looking to buy something that can, they can make some quick money on, perhaps not a whole lot of effort. But there's all sorts of avenues that you can utilize when you start looking at real estate speculation. Let me break down a few of them for you. First and foremost, there's the idea of buying brand new construction. You know, that's the time when the builders turn around and say, hey, listen, three, four, five years from now, this one's going to be ready for you to close. So this is when a lot of people jump on the bandwagon and they say, it's going to be affordable now. It's going to go up in value. So by the time I'm going to turn around and close on it, I'm going to have a huge increase in value. So how about a couple caveats on this one? Make sure you have what they call an assignment clause in that offer when you are buying brand new construction for the future. You know, one of the reasons why I try to break this one down is because the most important thing for you to understand is life does happen. We all know that. Do you, are you going to have a job over the next few years? Does something happen in your life? How about in some form of marital capacity? Will that change? Things do change. I can't tell you what's going to happen in my life, you know, five years from now, but can you? Can you to decide what's going to happen five years from now? Probably not. And it's best not to risk something. So make sure you've got an assignment clause in that offer. Now, again, when we take a look at marketplaces, we have to be conscious of what that marketplace is going to need over the next five years. So if you're going to be a speculator, make sure that you're buying into an area that you know is going to have good growth, high demand, and of course, immigration does help because five years from now, that, that, that marketplace could have way more people living in it and there's gonna be a bigger demand for what you own. Now, in the meantime, when we talk about being a speculator, there's two ways that can happen. You can turn around and close on the property. If you do close on it, that means you're gonna pay land transfer tax. You're also going to have to pay a lawyer to close on it. And you're gonna to have to have a mortgage in place. At that point, if you decide to sell, that is going to have capital gains. Keeping in mind that that's not always the best way to do it. You could sell that piece of paper, you're agreeing to purchase and sell prior closing. But if you're going to do that, always keep this in mind. You no longer are talking about capital gains you are now talking about income tax. And that one, you gotta make sure. Because I can tell you, the IRS and Revenue Canada wanna make sure they get their money. So keep that in mind when you're doing your calculation about how much money you're going to earn. Now, of course, there's other opportunities out there. I know a lot of people like the idea of doing the quick flip. So in other words, buy a property, renovate it, you know, and then turn around and take it to the market. So again, this is going to be more capital gains infused because you've taken title and you're going to be doing renovations. Now, 
You know, a lot of people turn around and they think renovations can happen overnight. You know, something happens within 30, 60 days. Well, to be honest with you, by the time you close, if there's any permits that are necessary, if there's a lot of construction, things that you just did not figure out when you're buying the property, you could have a lot longer time. So one of the things I always believe everybody should think of is your cash flow for six months. In other words, from the time that you buy it, when you start looking at construction, and then from there, the carrying of that mortgage. Keep all of this in. Make sure you've broken down your costs. Financing, construction, legal fees, and then to disperse it, potential real estate fees. When we take a look at those numbers, you've got to make sure that you're still in profit. A lot of times people turn around, they're basically buying themselves a job. You have to decide if that's something you want to do. Now, other avenues, of course, when we take a look at it, is the idea of the rent to own strategy. A lot of times people will buy a property, they will then lease it out to a tenant, the tenant will give them a sizable deposit for it to rent for the next two years with the idea that they're going to be able to buy it. Now, one of the problems with a buy to own uh, scenario like that is potentially the market could go up more or the fact that the tenant doesn't reestablish credit or one of the reasons why they couldn't get a mortgage in the first place. So you may end up two years from now in the same boat saying, okay, we either do this again or you may have to disperse of the asset because you didn't want to be a landlord. Now, again, there's all sorts of other opportunities out there. And as we go along each week, I'm going to keep you up to date on some of the opportunities that might face you in the marketplaces. Again, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. You know what? It's so quick, these little, these little segments. It goes by so fast. But again, thinking about what you want to be when you talk about investment real estate, all sorts of opportunities. And I will uh, talk about more of this as time goes on and try to keep you up to date on what's happening in your marketplace. Anyways, I'm your host, Todd C. Slater. You've been watching Simply Real Estate right here.